It's Sexual Assault Awareness Month. We will let you know of resources available for students on campus. Spring is here and we are asking Columbia students, what are you wearing? Exercise and self-defense classes at Columbia College. We'll introduce you to mixed martial arts. Happy Friday, it's April 21st. I'm Citlali Magali Sotelo. And I'm Holly Angus. Welcome to Newsbeat. Those stories just ahead, but first, more police presence after a concerning incident that occurred in the loop last weekend. Large groups of teenagers gathered near Millennium Park, resulting in violence. Videos posted on social media showed fights breaking out, cars being broken into, and vehicles being set on fire. The gatherings resulted in at least two teenagers being shot. The city is preparing for similar gatherings to happen this weekend. As a result, there will be an increased police presence downtown. The youth curfew, which bans teens under 18 from entering Millennium Park after 6 p.m., has also been reinstated. With April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month, Columbia is teaming up with different services and committees to make sure students are learning to stay safe. Reporter Nathan Fournier and photojournalist Sam Tucker have more. A student's college years are meant to be some of the most exciting of their lives. But according to a study done with the Association of American Universities, it was reported that among undergraduate students, 26.4% of females and 6.8% of males experience rape or sexual assault through physical force, violence, or incapacitation. Within these cases, the U.S. Department of Justice reported that 90% of campus sexual assaults are committed by perpetrators that the survivor knows. Schools like Columbia College Chicago are making sure that their students are aware of these statistics and what to do if they ever find themselves in a situation like this. And there's this, uh, I think, assumption that it's a stranger or someone in the bar or something like that, but the reality is most of the time it's someone that you know. and so having that knowledge and being equipped to learn how to set your own boundaries and, and give consent or say no to people that you know is kind of, of, of critical importance. Columbia's Counseling Services and the Sexual Assault Awareness and Education Committee held a consent workshop here in the Student Center that focused on what consent is defined as and how that relates to the college experience. Consent is something that's given freely. It's not something that's coerced. Um, consent is not something that's like cemented. They can change at any given time. Talking about like the situations and also normalizing consent is so important. And having a space, like a safe space to talk about it on a college campus is very valuable. So being able to voice our experiences and these topics is really important. As these safe spaces grow on campus, they can create a dialogue with fellow students that can help bring a better understanding. Yeah, it's really taboo to talk about sex. Um, I think that the more students are willing to engage in conversations like this, like the presentation we just did, um, the easier it becomes to talk about sex. If peers are willing to lead workshops like this or share their own stories surrounding sex and consent, um, and sexual assault awareness, I think that that's probably the most effective way to get, um, to make it less taboo and get more people involved. But being uncomfortable brings change and it brings awareness. So I think instilling it on college campus, like orientation, or like even having it in sex, sex, ed sex education from like middle school and on is really important. And I think that could help normalize that. With just one week left in April, the committee still plans on having more events that surround sexual assault awareness, like National Denim Day and an exhibit that displays assault victims' writing that takes place on April 27th. This is Nathan Fournier, Newsbeat, Columbia College, Chicago. For more information and further resources on Columbia's Title IX policies, visit the Sexual Misconduct Resources page at students.colum.edu. Are you looking for a summer internship but don't know where to start? Columbia offers a wide variety of services and resources to help make the process smoother. You can make an appointment with Jennifer Halpering to discuss your resume, portfolio, and the free tools Columbia offers to students for job searching, such as Handshake, Portfolio, to schedule one-on-one, -on -one, 
meeting today, visit Handshake.com, click on the Career Center tab, then click Appointments, and schedule the time that works best for you. Columbia's Biggest Mouth winner 2023 was announced last night. If you missed out on the action, don't worry. Myself and our own photojournalist, Bianca Cruzel, we were in the pit. Last night, Columbia's Biggest Mouth competition returned for its second year at the Metro in Wrigleyville, located at 3730 North Clark Street. A total of 12 artists went head to head and sang their hearts out for the title of Biggest Mouth 2023. With some incredible prizes at stake, the competition was tough. The first place prize included a huge $1,000 and also to headline Columbia's Manifest 2023. Also not forgetting a four hour studio session with Music Garage and an exclusive interview with NMG. Second place included a $750 prize a Spotify campaign, an interview with Ghetto Forever, and a performance on Manifest's main stage. Lastly, third place included a $500 cash prize, a social media advertising campaign, a two-hour photo shoot with Lumber Studios, and a performance at Manifest as well. We spoke to some of the artists performing tonight. I mean, I've been performing since I was eight years old, so like, to play like at on stage at the Metro first is such a huge like just accomplishment like and goal of mine. So like actually win would be wild. <laughs> Navila hosted last night's Biggest Mouth event. So I feel like what I love about Biggest Mouth so much is just all the different types of talent we get to see from different Columbia students. I feel like so often we're all in our own little pockets of Columbia and like different things and genres and cultures like Biggest Mouth feels like the place where everyone at Columbia is able to come together all as one and really just like appreciate the student musicians that we have here because they're freaking talented. The winners of Biggest Mouth 2023 at Superdime. I feel like because we all grew up in the same area, listening to the same type of music, we've all been friends for so long, we just know how our brains work and we know how we our brains work musically especially. Um, so it's really not a lot of conversation, it just clicks and it's been working like that since we started. So, Bigger Smile will return again next year and it's expected to be bigger and better than ever. If you would like to compete in this amazing competition and get your name out there, make sure to follow the Student Programming Board on Instagram and look out for the open auditions next year. Holly Angus, reporting from Chicago, Newsbeat. Have you ever wanted to go to Argentina but couldn't because of school? Well, there's no more excuses. J Term 2024 is offering a study abroad opportunity. I spoke to Gabriela Diaz de Sabates and Marcelo Sabates about it. Let's take a look. Argentina. The second largest country in Latin America, home to the champions of the 2022 World Cup, known for their tango and famous asado, and of course the widest avenue in the world, Avenida 9 de Julio. The opportunity to study abroad in this country is being offered for the second consecutive year in the upcoming J term of 2024. Professors Gabriela Diaz de Sabates and Marcelo Sabates will be hosting this trip as they show students around their native homeland, Argentina, including the capital, Buenos Aires, and Jujuy. One of the 16 selected students who attended the first trip this past January was senior Jocelyn Castro. We go back to Jujuy, which is a province that we also visited because it's major like predominantly indigenous. And I just really liked that it felt more homely and it felt more familiar to me, even though I know nothing about Argentinian culture. The trip itself, though, in both places was very enlightening. And I'm very um, happy that we had Marcelo and Gabriela there because they are Argentinian themselves. So they knew where to take us. They knew the history. They just knew what they were talking about. And that was a really impactful part of the trip. Both of these professors just really want to create a sense of diversity at Colombia and help students see the world. Besides their Argentina 2024 J term study abroad, they're also proposing a study abroad to go to Mexico in the summer of next year. I think these are great opportunities for students who are not exposed to the Latin American culture to feel the culture around them, see it, and just kind of get to know what they're not exposed to every single day. 
Also, fun fact, did you know that you can't name your kid Messi in Argentina because of Lionel Messi? Well, there you have it. Um, so it, it came from this idea that uh, all the study abroad programs are in Europe currently. So we wanted to diversify the offer. And we thought that uh, both Latin American studies and gender studies were great topics to to teaching uh, in Latin America. Uh, and we decided uh, uh, to do it in Argentina uh, as a pilot uh, to then increase to, or, uh, or diversify it to uh, Mexico, Peru, possibly other places. Despite these students not really knowing each other, Gabriela and Marcelo were very pleased with the interest shown since the beginning of the program. Um, they had a wonderful relationship. They went out, uh, you know, for dinner together. They explored the city with us, but then they really established a, not only a very good connection with each other, but also with um, with Argentinian culture and people in Argentina. They were extremely positive. Um, it was a fabulous group. Even though we are a while away from January, if you are interested in this study abroad, you can start planning ahead by contacting Gabriela and Marcelo for more information. Spanish language is not required, pero si lo hablas, aprovechalo. Holly, have you ever been to a Latin American country? I never have, but I plan to this summer. I'm going to Mexico. That's exciting. I hope you have so much fun. Thank I'm you. going to Mexico in three weeks. Maybe I'll see you there. Maybe. Next on Newsbeat, April is Autism Awareness Month, and we have more information on how to stay inclusive. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm here on South Wabash Avenue for Columbia's Earth Day cleanup event. I got the chance to interview President Dr. Kim. I'll have that and more with you soon. You are there for them. We are here for you. Find free care guides at aarp.org. That was perfect. Oh, you guys said that was perfect. Natural disasters are a fact of life in the U.S. And between activities and school, chances are you won't be with your kids when they happen. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids can help your children feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. It's National Autism Awareness Month. Our reporter Jake Fredrickson and photojournalist Patrick Response learned a little bit more about how we can stay inclusive to everyone. April is National Autism Awareness Month and it's important to both celebrate and educate people on the achievements and contributions of autistic people. UNA graduate Hannah Smith studied media communications and currently leads the internet fulfillment team at her local Lowe's. 
all with autism. Play into Alabama stereotypes, but there is no education about it. And what you see of autism, it's very stereotyped. It's Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory. It's this very specific idea of it. And for most people in society, they have no idea what that looks like for a woman either. Smith promotes local organizations for the advocacy of all marginalized people. NWSRA is the largest special recreation association in Illinois. Located in Chicago's northwest suburbs, Rachel Hubsch describes their approach to accommodating participants, 70 to 80 percent of whom are adults or children with autism. Everybody is different. We always say if you meet one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. Autism is different for each person, the same way different traits make all people unique. The last characteristic or quality about a person. Beyond building skills, participants attend to have fun in various ways. I'm here at one of NWSRA's programming sites where they have several leisurely activities for participants to experience. I'm currently in their fully accessible technology lab with one of their participants, Harry, who is currently climbing Mount Everest. For the last five minutes, there is a meditation video that I enjoy. I think it's important that society takes advantage of the skills they, they do have. He adds how Dylan is often perceived since autism isn't visible. Sometimes I think are afraid of what they don't understand. And so if you see a 19 year old man behaving oddly, you know, sometimes it could be uh, scary to people. Smith says education is key in solving people's ignorance and fear. We need to let the autistic people speak their voice. Consume the work of autistic authors and look up NWSRA or other organizations for more information. Jake Fredrickson, Columbia College, Chicago, Newsbeat. Columbia College's student-led newspaper, The Chronicle, is now accepting applications for multiple positions including photojournalists, staff reporters, Spanish language reporters, illustrators, and more. This is an excellent opportunity for those looking to gain valuable experience in journalism and media. If you're interested in applying for a position the Chronicle, at the Chronicle, you have until April 28 at 12 a.m. to submit your application. For more information about available positions, pay and qualifications, visit handshake.com and search the Columbia Chronicle. Columbia students are known for our unique personal styles. Photojournalist Andrea Skura and field producer Aubriella Jackson went around campus asking students, what are you wearing? Uh, today I'm wearing, I think everything is thrifted, I'm pretty sure. So this is a vintage band tee that my roommate gave me. Thank you, Mikey. Um, this is a flannel that I use on paint days because I helped paint um, an exhibition this morning. Um, this is also just a thrifted kind of like corduroy jacket, thrifted pants. 50 V8 belt buckle, and some really old, just regular high top converse from my freshman year of high school. So yeah, and then a necklace from my best friend back home. But that's all I'm wearing today. <laughs> uh, today I'm wearing a purple outfit. I think the shirt's from Forever 21. I think the pants are from Primark. And this jacket is from a program that was last year in the Dwight that Andreas put on that was like a clothes swap <laughs> program what i'm wearing today got the 12 dollar jacket from goodwill that is falling apart uh a bunch of items that i have stolen from my sister belt from target shoes stolen from my mom um i don't know a lot of my style is kind of i don't know it's based off what i find on pinterest that i like my friends say it's like very goth. I don't know what that means. I'm gonna be honest, I copy a lot of my style on Lupe from Friends. I like her a lot. I think she dresses nice. So today, I actually know what I'm wearing. You caught me on a good day. Uh, I got these shoes and the shirt from Target. I got these chino pants from Levi's. This is from the thrift store. 
And this is from H&M slash my fiance. I like to wear blacks. A lot of my closet is just black so that it's easy to grab something and go. Um, and then a little fun something over it. Well, talking about what we're wearing, I'm dying to know where you got that necklace from. I actually got it at Aldo a couple of years ago, but I really love your blazer. Thank you. I got this for $6 at a thrift store in Chicago. Absolute steal. That is such me. a steal. Tomorrow's Earth Day, Newsbeat Nathan Fournier and Sam Tucker are at Columbia's Park cleanup event, Nathan. All right, hi everyone, it's me, Nathan Fournier. We are currently here on South Wabash Avenue for Columbia's Earth Day cleanup event, where currently we have people from Columbia faculty, administration, and students working together to help clean up the streets of South Wabash. Right now, they're currently cleaning up to see what is going to be either recycling or garbage, where at 12 o'clock, they're going to be in the garden picking out and measuring how much they are have, how much they have. So currently we're here with the president of Columbia College Chicago, Dr. Kim. How are you doing today? Great, great. It's very exciting. Yeah, so how do you feel about Columbia putting together this event? What do you think really inspired this? How do you feel about everything overall? I think we're really proud of our community because the idea that we, we have pride in the institution and we understand that the way the streets look is a part of our image to the world. It's very important and the fact that the students came together and said, well, let's do something about this. It makes me really sad. I've been talking about this a lot. It's a lot of people. Yeah, it's great. Awesome. Thank you so, so thank much. You. Thank you. All right. right. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you. Cloudy weather is ahead this weekend. We have your weekend forecast coming up. I'm Zaid Hussein with Columbia College Chicago's TV Newsbeat, and today we will be highlighting all amenities Columbia has to offer here in our beautiful college. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Ah, there it is. Be born with it. Cleo. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Being prepared is a part of who you are, but it's especially important in the case of a disaster. Be informed about possible emergencies in your area. Make a plan that covers where you go in an emergency. Build a kit with the things you need to survive. There's no one more capable of planning for your situation than you. Start your plan today. Go to ready.gov slash my plan. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but like one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Aren't we in spring and not fall? We are still in the mid-50s and mid-60s. For the next seven days, we are looking at that same Chicago windy weather. The highest will be today with 64 degrees and the lowest will be next Sunday with 48 degrees. Also, keep an umbrella with you because remember, April showers. Looking for a new way to work out? Try an MMA class at Columbia Student Center Gym. Reporter Zaid Hussein and photojournalist Sam Tucker got an inside look at the class. I'm Zaid Hussein with TV Newsbeat here at Columbia College Chicago. Today we are at the Student Center where we look at the Columbia College gym and all the amenities they have to offer. Okay, what would you say is the biggest part of, you know, being in charge of the South 
defense nice? Uh, for me personally, it's just making sure everyone feels comfortable with what we're learning. Um, I do Taekwondo and Hapkido and I have a lot of experience. So a lot of this is new for everyone who's coming to my class and I want to take people who know nothing and people who might know a little bit and get everyone on the same page. Um, overall, I just want everyone to feel safe and comfortable with like the new techniques that we're learning. I think a lot of these skills are life skills that everyone needs to know or you know, should at least be a little bit aware of. And if anything else, it's just like a fun 45 minutes. Martial arts classes just gives people confidence knowing that, you know, you're comfortable with your body and that you can defend yourself if something were to happen to you. Um, and just overall giving you a better, uh, better sense of yourself. It makes me really happy just seeing someone like going from not knowing how to do anything, not knowing how to throw a punch, and then, you know, after a workout or so, they just kind of start to, to get that sweet science down and, and start to figure it out. It's really, uh, really satisfying to see. I'm with Joseph Gonzalez. Joe, you are the head MMA instructor. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do here at the college? It's uh, mostly just uh, self-defense. We work on boxing, Muay Thai, and we try and kind of implement different styles to kind of make everything whole. We don't uh, uh, we do not do any grappling, so like wrestling or jiu-jitsu, since we don't have a mat or anything like that. So it's mostly just striking. Uh, but it's, it's a v great way to stay in shape and a great way to know how to defend yourself if anything were to happen. Can you give me a rundown of basically what to do with a new student that's looking to join MMA? Should they come and take this class, or what would you say about it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can start any time you'd like. Uh, you, have, you can either be, you've done some in the past, or you've never done any at all. I know how to, you know, teach from every grade, if you know what I mean. So, um, if you don't have any experience, uh, I would gladly like to do one-on-ones with you and kind of build you up from that point. That's how everybody here started. They knew nothing about striking and they've progressed in about, let's say, four months. Thank you so much. I'm Zaid Hussein, joined by Joseph Gonzalez here at Columbia College Chicago Student Center. Peace out. Things are looking up for the Chicago Cubs. Jake Fredrickson has more for us in sports this week. Thanks, guys. Spring's here, and we all know when it rains, it pours. Blackhawks GM Kyle Davidson announced last Thursday that franchise legend and team captain Jonathan Taves will not be returning to the Hawks next season. The news comes just two months after longtime co-star Patrick Kane departed for New York. In 15 years with the Hawks, Taves won three Stanley Cups, several awards, and earned his recognition among the NHL's 100 greatest players ever. With the Hawks fully initiating a rebuild, Taves played his final home game last Thursday against the Flyers, where he took a slow farewell lap around the ice, eliciting crazed cheers throughout the whole United Center. The 19-year-old prodigy that joined the team in 2007 is now leaving as a decorated Hall of Famer after leading one of Chicago's greatest sports dynasties ever. Thanks for everything, Cap. The Bulls are also off duty for a while, as they just barely missed the playoffs after losing the final game of the play-in tournament to the Miami Heat last Friday, falling just 11 points short of a postseason appearance. With Nick Vucevic, Patrick Beverly, and Kobe White among several other possible free agents on the team, the Bulls have a lot of questions heading into this offseason. Ultimately, the Bulls' future rides heavily on star guard Lonzo Ball's recovery from his cartilage transplant surgery a procedure that no NBA player has ever been able to return from so far. Wishing Lonzo the best in recovery and wishing the Bulls luck this offseason. Meanwhile, the Cubs are off to a surprisingly strong start. Despite being projected to finish in the bottom third of final league standings, the Cubs are four games above 500 right now, outpacing their crosstown rivals, the White Sox, who are projected to finish higher in standings but are currently under 500. Well, that's all in sports this week. Get active and enjoy the weather, Columbia. Back to you guys. The Earth Day cleanup event is still going strong. Let's go back to Newsbeat Nathan Fournier and Sam Tucker, who are in the South Loop with more. All right, everyone. I am now here in front of the garden where they are now uh, measuring all of the garbage and recycling collected, where they are now going to be sorting it into either recycling or garbage. And with Earth Day coming up tomorrow, this is now just one of the first steps into making Columbia's campus much more sustainable. I got the chance to talk with some of these students in the Student Center beforehand, where they said not only do they want the Columbia Center and community to be much cleaner for themselves, but also for upcoming admitted students. This is Nathan Fournier here in the South Loop. Back to you guys.
Thanks, Nathan. Before we say goodbye, next week on Newsbeat, we take a look into trans students' wellness and Columbia's tuition hike. Be sure to join us next week for more amazing stories. Have a great weekend and happy Earth Day.